Okay, let's get started. Upper deck, volume okay? All right, people in the back either can't hear me or thank you. Okay, so I don't have a big agenda today. Um, the goal is to do what I can over the next 50 minutes to prepare you for the midterm next week. Okay, so, you know, this is an important checkpoint in this class. So, please, with the coughing, we talked about this. Um, yeah, so if you, if you have a cold, I'll post the video about this later. Right? No one wants to take the midterm sick. You don't want me to write the midterm sick. So, you know, one of the things we do a lot in this class is we try to make sure that you guys are okay and that you're moving forward at an appropriate pace. And that's why we give these midterm exams. Um, it's not, the format is the same as a quiz. It's an hour long. Uh, it's more cumulative. Uh, the programming component will be emphasized a little bit more. There will be no questions from the book, which people are pleased about, I guess. Um, but you know, the goal, you know, is all of the assessments we do in the class, the goal is to make sure that you know what we think you know. You know, I was thinking about how some other courses still work and how some courses I took in college used to work where it was like, you showed up, you went to class for like two months, and then it was like, oh yeah, we should give an exam. See if anybody knows anything, right? Um, and you know, a lot of times it was like, oh, I got confused on like the third day and I've never caught up. Um, so. We try not to do that. That's why we do the daily assessments, but that's why we do the weekly assessments, and that's why we do the, the mission. So this is not punitive. Um, it's intended to give us a sense of how you're doing. The other thing, and this hasn't been as much of an issue this semester, which I'm pleased about. You guys have been doing quite well on the, on the quizzes, actually. You've been outperforming last fall and last spring, so congratulations. I don't have numbers on that, but I peeked at it last night. But, um, you know, Here's another dynamic that's going on. Many of you are freshmen. You're all extremely intelligent. But it's possible that you are starting to see some scores on quizzes that are unfamiliar to you. Maybe they don't start with a nine, or they don't start with, you know, or they don't consist of a one followed by two zeros, right? Um, you know, I've had students come in in the past and they said, oh, I failed the quiz because they got a 60. We don't assign letter grades to any individual assessments in this class, ever. So you didn't get an F on the quiz. You didn't get an F on the MP if you got a 50 F. At the very end of the semester, you guys will all receive one letter grade from me. That's it. Most of the time in the past, people have been pretty comfortable with the letter grades they receive at the end of the semester. But, you know, it's useful from our perspective to sometimes you know, we understand this dynamic. I get it. I get that you don't like to get a 60 on a quiz. I don't get that some of you guys don't want to get a 70 on a quiz. Some of you are frustrated if you get an 80 or even like an 85. I'm using that to my advantage. We use that to keep you guys going, right? So some of you will walk out and be like, oh, I really wish I would have done better and you got an 80 and I actually think you did okay, but I'm glad you think you should do better because you can do better. And if you prepare better, you will do better. Okay, so format of the midterm. Yeah, so the goal of this is just to make sure you're ready to go on. We'll do this. If you do really poorly, we're gonna have a conversation about your future in this class, right? Um, but poorly is relative here. So, but the goal here is to make sure that you're ready to go on and succeed throughout the rest of the semester. Yeah, question. Oh, oh we will pump up the volume again. Is that better? Is that better? I've got this thing all the way up now. I have it all the way up. I'm not going to do this throughout the rest of the class. I don't know. Okay, like that. Thankfully, there's no video of me, just the slide. Um, is that better? Okay. Can anyone hear me now? Can anyone not hear me? Okay. It's all the coughing. That's why you can't hear. <laughs> all right, so, format of the midterm exam. There will be 12 multiple choice questions. These will be largely code reading questions. 
in the multiple, the sort of simple, like what's the type of this variable question, those are gone. Those were quiz questions. The midterm questions are gonna have you read some code. There aren't as many of them, but they're a little bit more, they're a little bit meatier, every one of them. There are three programming questions on the midterm. One is on arrays. I'm gonna tell you something about the midterm. Um, one is on using multidimensional arrays, which we talked about last week. And there's one on using strings. I have to drink water just listening to you guys talk. Okay. And there will be, and here's another promise I will make to you. One of the questions on the midterm is already available for you to practice. It's on the homework 125 practice problem set. I'm not gonna tell you which one. Again, I understand how this works, but there is one question on there that will be drawn directly from the homework you've already done. This morning, before class, I published all of the old quiz questions, along with all of the old homework. There is not a homework problem today, by the way. Um, give you guys a little bit of a break. I'll be back on Monday. Um, but, so this is the format of the exam. Any questions about this? Yeah. What's that? There are, no, one of the three. There are three programming questions. One of them, not telling you which, is gonna be drawn from the practice problems. One of them is already out there in the world, available to you, for you to practice. Other questions? Questions about format? It's an hour long, as usual. Yeah. You can solve the problem any way you want. Yeah, I'll show, we'll, we're, we're gonna go over that later, actually, and we'll do some substring-based solutions. Yeah, there were some clever solutions to the rotate string problem that used a substring function that did we give you a hint about using that, or did you find that on your own? I can't remember. I think there was a hint. Yeah. Great question. So the question is, which string methods do we expect you to be familiar with? So anything that we've had you use in a homework problem, I would at least know that it exists. Know that it's out there. We will provide the documentation for the string class as part of the exam. So you'll have that available to you. Now, do you really want to be hunting around in there with the clock ticking in the CVTF? I don't think so. But, you know, knowing that there's a function called split and a little bit about how to use it, knowing that their strings have a length function, knowing that there's an equality method for strings, um, those are useful things. Yeah, good question. There will be no questions about the book on the midterm. Yeah. Are you guys getting those wrong? They're so easy. All right. Other questions? Yeah. You cannot review the multiple choice questions from the quizzes, but all the programming questions from the quizzes are up on the 125 problems. Yeah. If you want to look at the multiple choice questions, uh, find a TA in office hours, not a CA. Some of you guys are losing the distinction there. The TAs are graduate students, the CAs are undergraduates. We have a lot of CAs, we have a few TAs. Uh, the TAs are allowed to look at your home, at your quiz scores on Prairie Learn. The CAs are not. So if you come to office hours when it's not crowded with people that are working on an MP and ask a TA to go over the quiz, they'll be happy to do that if you want to look at those. Okay, will you only get one attempt at writing each programming question? How many people think the answer to that question is yes? How many attempts have you gotten on the quizzes? As many as you can fit into and out. Yeah. Why would, who do you think I am? Am I a bad guy? No, no, we want you to practice. I know you guys make small mistakes. I have a lot of sympathy for people to make small mistakes. I make a lot of small mistakes. You will always, on any programming problem, whether it's MP, quiz, homework, get as many attempts as you can fit into the time allocated for this class. And I encourage you to use that to your advantage. 
Other questions? Yeah, sorry. What's the point breakdown? I think, good question. I think the programming questions are worth about half of the points. I have to, I'll have to go back and look. Yeah, if you ask that on the forum, I'll give you the first. Oh, right, good question. Um, is there partial credit on the programming question? I don't remember. I think the answer is yes. Well, I will check. Other questions? Okay, so let's do some problems together. Actually, I said this was an open review session. Does anyone have a question about the content? Does anyone have a problem that they'd like to do? Uh, does anyone have a, yeah? Ah, okay, uh, I have a call to do rotate left. You guys wanna look at rotate left? Yeah, okay. Let's see here. I've got this one on the slides, all right. So, we did rotate right. Take a string, rotate it so that the characters move to the right a certain number of, uh, you know, based on a parameter that's passed in. Can I solve the same problem rotating the string to the left, okay? So here's how I'm gonna approach the problem. Now there are other ways to do this, and actually in a minute, I'll show you some other ways to approach the problem. Some of them are good. Some of them need some work, okay? So here's what, here's my suggestion for how we approach this. First of all, it's usually easier to work when I'm doing these rotations with an array. Because then I can use modular arithmetic and I can let things wrap around a little bit with my indices. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the string and I'm gonna convert it to an array of characters. We know that strings fundamentally are an array of characters. So this is just changing the representation a little bit. So I'm changing a string, and I'm gonna use one of the built-in string functions to extract the array of characters. Then I'm gonna work with that array, and then when I'm done, I'll return a string, I'll take whatever array of characters I've left with, and I'll return that as a string. So then I'm gonna, uh, I need a loop where I'm going through every string character by character, because I know that every character in the string has to end up somewhere in the new string that I'm creating. So the trick is to figure out where. So inside my loop, I know two things. Remember, when I have an array, I've associated a piece of metadata with every piece of data in the array. So the array, the data in the array are characters. The metadata is an index. And what I really need to work on is that index because I know that that character is gonna go somewhere in the array that I'm creating, I just don't know where. So I need to figure that out. Once I know the new index, I'm gonna copy that character into the new array, and when I'm, so when I'm done, I'll have an array that I can return as a string. All right, so let's do this together. So I'm gonna declare a function that returns a string called rotate left, takes a string as input, for now, let's just return the input and make sure that I've declared my function. Oh, I have not. Why is this mad at me? Oh, I need it, it has to take a parameter. There we go. Okay, parameter rotation. Oh, and my function signature's wrong. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's good to, s oh, and this has to be static. All right, so here's my starting point. If you did this in Prairie Learn, you didn't have to add the static, but it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so let's go back to my algorithm. And again, when you guys are working on problems like this, oh, please, whether it's in the CBTF or on the MP, I strongly suggest you, the less code you write between figuring out what happens, running some tests, putting some print statements in, trying to examine what's going on, the less code you write, the more likely it is that you're gonna be headed in the right direction. So the first thing I need to be able to do is figure out how to get um, an array out of this string. And if I recall correctly, is it two care array? Let's try that, okay, so it seems to work. 
And now actually let's print the length of this array to make sure that I did things properly. Okay. So that seems to work. If you hadn't, you know, again, that's, you know, you would ask about the string functions to remember, this is a good one to remember. I, I can get an array of characters out of a string. Great. So now what else do I need? I also need an output array. So I need a new array. And here, I'm gonna create a new character array. How big should my output array be? Same size as the input array. So I'm gonna say new care input array dot length. Make sure that works. Okay, good. So now I'm gonna write that loop that goes through the character array, and let's just make sure that this loop worked first. Oh, what is wrong with this? Oh, sorry. There we go. I told you about making simple mistakes. All right, so it looks like I'm retrieving the indices properly. So now, before we actually do the rotation, let's just get all the wrapper code done. So let's just, for now, let's not rotate the string at all. Let's just put the characters into the same spot in the new array. So we're gonna say output array, I'll say int rotated index is equal to i. Eventually I'm gonna need to do some work here. Add rotation code. And then I'm gonna say output array rotated index is equal to input array i. And now instead of just returning the input, I'm gonna return string created from the output array. Okay. So now I've got, you know, and again, I would really encourage you guys to do this. Whenever you're trying to write complex pieces of code, write the simple thing first. Get all of the kind of like fiddly stuff done. So now I know that the top part of my function is right and the bottom part is right, and all I have to do is work with this, uh, this bit in here. Okay. So what do we definitely need to do, right? So let's think about this. So let's try to, let's try to do CS125 rotated left one place. So where should, so if I'm at position I, where should I put that character in the new string? If I know I want to move it left. If I add to it, I'm moving it right. If I subtract from it, I'm moving it left. Let's try to say rotated index is equal to i minus rotation, okay? And let's see what happens if I do that. So this is, I'm sort of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm on the right track here, but if I try running this code, I have a problem. And the problem is, is the um, error message indicates I have an array index out of bounds exception. When you, whenever you have one of those, it tells you right there what the bad index was, okay? All right, so it looks like it's at line seven, and actually what's happening is when I try to use my rotated index to copy the character into the new array, I'm trying to copy it into an invalid place. Okay, so what's the problem here? What's gone wrong? Let's think about what happens the first time I come through the loop. I is zero, rotation is one. I take I minus rotation and I get negative one, which is not a valid index. So let's think about it. What's the right place? If I'm rotating left by one and I have a string of length five, what's the right place to put the character at index zero? The rotated index should be equal to one. Negative one's wrong, I want to rotate over to the right side of the string, so what's the position at the very end of the string? If I have a string of length five, the last valid index is four. Yeah. All right, so let's try this. All right, so it, 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 it seems like I, I have a, you know, I need to add a special case here, which is to say if rotated index is less than zero, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip 
flip it over to the other side. So this is gonna take negative one, it's gonna add five to it, and it's gonna give me four. And you can work out what would happen in the other cases. If I had gone two off to the left, to negative two, this would take me back to three, which is also correct. All right, let's try this. Ah, okay. That's interesting. Okay, so now, now what happened here? Looks like I have a, a another problem, right? I've missed. Okay, so let's put in zero. See what happens again. Okay, so when I put in zero, I've got this. Uh, I've got things correct, right? Let's put in some debugging logic here, so we can try to see what's going on. So again, this is another thing that I would encourage you guys to do whenever you're. Oh, I gotta add another plus here. Okay. Ah, okay. There's a bug in my code. Who can see it? And every programmer makes mistakes. What did I do wrong here? Who can see it? I should do bug bounties in this one. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, so the problem is here, right? I wanted to send zero to position four, and instead I ended up sending, sending it to position zero. So what did I do wrong? Where's the bug? Yeah. Yeah, so the problem here is that I'm using rotation, and what I want to use here is input array dot length. I want to use the length of the string. Okay. So now, I've got a correct result for one, which is great, okay? Right? I'm gonna leave that little piece of debugging logic in there, because I think we might need it in a minute. I'm not quite done with that yet. And again, this is a useful thing to do when you're working through problems. All right, so let's try some other values. Let's try two and see if two works. That seems to work. Let's try three. Three seems to work. Okay, so let's try five. Right? Five works. What about six? Oh, okay. Now I have another problem. So again, you know, if you were writing this, you might, you might have thought it was right. Okay? And this is why, you know, you want to think carefully about your test cases. This is supposed to work for any rotation. And right now, it works only for a very fixed number. It'll work, uh, it's not gonna work for negative indices either. Okay, that should be a right rotation. So it'll work up until I get to six, and then I have the same problem that I had before. So what am I missing here? Yeah. Yeah, let's try this. Let me put uh, my debugging logic in back again, and you'll see that I'm back to this old problem, where zero, rather than going to four, is going to negative one. And actually, if I use a, if I use a larger value, you're gonna see this is gonna get worse. So now I've got three negative indices. So there's one place here where I need to use a modulus to make sure that my index stays in range, or the remainder operator in Java. And the place is right here. So when I compute my original rotated index, I'm going to insert my modulus operator. And that's gonna, sorry, I keep calling it a modulus. It's really important to remember this in Java, okay? And this is one of the things that's sad about Java. Another one of those little quirks about the language. In Languages like Python, this is actually a modulus, which cannot be negative. In Java, it's a remainder operator, which can be negative. So in many other programming languages, we would not need this. Can we have one conversation, guys? Here we go. 
So there are many other programming languages where we would not need to insert this particular piece of, of code to check against the negative indices. But in Java, we do. Okay. So now I think we're getting close, actually. This looks right. Let me take out my debugging statement. And let's put in some, okay, so let's, let's check with some values here. So let's check zero. That works. Let's check five. That works. Let's check 10. Any multiple of five should give me back when I start. What are some other values I should try? I haven't tried, so I can try arbitrarily large positive values. So for example, I could say 10, say five times 125. I'm gonna get the right answer. So that seems to work. What haven't I tested yet? Okay, so if I'm trying to test this code, I need to test some negative values. So let's try this. Seems to work. Okay. Good. What other thing am I not doing here, though? Defensive programming 101. What about, what about this? What's going to happen if I remember? Someone out there is always going to try to get your code to crash. Sometimes that person will be me. In the future, it'll be somebody else. It'll be a user, right? So the first thing I want to do is my input validation. If input is null, I'll just return null. Now I'm good. Okay. Questions about this? Where are you going? Yeah. You can already see the output of the print statements on, on the quiz. It's, it's not, I'm sorry that it's not as obvious as it looks here. It's sort of buried in the output of, of Perlin. But like, up until this point, and I will double check this if, if you guys remind me on the forum, we've always had print statements turned on on the, on the box, right? It can be a little bit tricky to interpret because we try lots of different test cases. So you might want to look, need to just look at one. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's always been an option. Other questions? Okay, so let me do, I want to do something fun now. Okay, so I'm going to, all right. So for a few minutes, so here's, later in the class, we are going to start giving you some points on the homework problems for this. But right now, I want to talk a little bit about um, good code hygiene. I want to talk about good and bad ways to, to, to solve problems, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this example, I think this is a good example, and I'm going to show you some submissions from actual students, not from you, not from, this is like from two semesters ago, right? These are actual student submissions. Now, all of these submissions passed our test cases, all right? So from the point of view of our tests, they are correct. However, they are not all perfect, nor are they all even what I would consider to be good, all right? So let's look at, let's look at a couple. I'm not gonna post these as part of the slide deck because I, I don't want to, to share these with you. Okay, so let me grab one of these. Let me see if I can find one that's, oh, okay, hold on. That, actually, that's a good one. All right. Here's, ah, okay. Here's a good one. Yeah, Chuck Style's gonna be angry with me. That's okay. I'm not gonna fix this all at once. But but start taking a look at this. And let's think about I'm gonna fix these Chuck Style errors quickly because I wanna show you that this actually works. This code is correct. It's just not very good. There you go. 
So it works. This is working code. Let me pull this down. But let's, let's critique it. So someone, you know, uh, came to my office hours a few weeks ago and they, they pointed out that there's uh, a lot of an musical analogies in terms of how we teach computer science in this class. So for example, the daily homework are practice. That's like practicing your instrument. The quizzes are like lessons, right? The, what you guys have coming up next week is like a recital. So the goal here is to have this be a little bit like a master class. So again, this is, this is a student submission. This is correct. It passed the test suites, the student got full credit. But what if, like, if you were reviewing this, you work at some software development company, you're hiring someone, or someone's hiring you, okay? Let's look at some misconceptions that we can see in this code and some places where we can clean it up a little. All right, so who wants to get me started? Yeah, okay, so I like that, right? Uh, so the second parameter, B. All right, what could we call this? A lot of options, I mean, I called it shift, I called it rotation, you could call it distance, something else, okay? Okay, good, I like that. Good descriptive variable name, all right, what else? place to start. What else can we do here? Yeah. Yeah, so, and, and, and to be honest, the, one of the reasons, so, so the, the concern, which I, I support, is that I'm creating a new variable length um, for, the Im for the length of the input, all right? And then, so this isn't really necessary. I could just, uh, just use input.length. This is actually connected with another feature of this problem, which is that it's too long. There's a, some, there's a fair amount of unnecessary code in here. And I think that's why the person who wrote it decided to do this, because they got tired of typing input.length, but they actually didn't need to use the, the length as often as they did, okay? What else? What else can we do here? So here's one sign that your code isn't quite perfect, which is that I can remove things from it and it will still work. So anyone wanna take a crack at this? There's some code in here that we can just toss and will have no impact on correct. We wanna suggest a couple of lines or a statement in there that we can throw overboard? I love doing this, by the way. It's like the best part of development software. It's getting rid of unnecessary stuff. Yeah. Lines four through six, yeah. So this is basically saying, if the length is zero, return the input. But what's gonna happen if the length is zero? Well, I'm gonna, well, first of all, oh, I know, well, actually, I know why this is here. Right, so this, uh, do we need this? Let's look. Let's try, uh, let's try getting rid of it. I'm gonna comment it out just in case we eventually want it again. All right, uh, let me make sure that zero still works here. Let's try a zero length input. Ah, there we go. So that's why this is here. It's here because if I try to use zero as a modulus, it's going to fail. So that we can't get rid of. Yeah. I think we can remove line eight to ten. So if it's zero, it doesn't also work. Right? Can yeah. So this isn't this check here. This this we don't need. Okay. Let's try five. That works. Okay. So now you know you might argue with me. Well, that made the code more efficient. Like, not really. You know, but particularly when you guys are getting started. Like, your job is to write code that is beautiful and concise. Right. Um, Adding a lot of special cases like that isn't necessarily the way to do it. Okay, what else? What else can we do here? 
I see something fairly glaring here. Kind of, kind of awful. Anyone wanna, yeah. Where? Okay, so, so you've noticed something on line 11 that's a problem. Um, does anyone want to elaborate? I see something on line 11 that I don't like a lot. Yeah. Well, so what's happening here is that every time I go through the array, I'm reconverting the input to an array of characters over and over again, right? It happens here, and it happens here. Okay? So there's a couple of, there's, there's two different ways I could change this. When we just did this, we converted it once at the top, and then we just used that array throughout the function, because it's not going to change. But there's another way to do it. Anybody remember? Strings have a helpful function here that I could use. So for me, this both sort of is, is a little bit messy, but it's also incorrect, because there's a better way to, do, to solve the same problem. What we're trying to accomplish is we're actually trying to get the va the, a particular string value, a particular character out of the string. Do strings have a way to do that? Yeah. Can use care at. Yeah, there we go. So I can accomplish the same thing here. Like that. All right. That makes me happy. That works. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, do I need this if else statement? So and, and that's a great, that's a great question. Remember, this is rotate right. Rotate right doesn't have some of, well, sometimes it does. But rotate right doesn't have all the same problems as rotate, uh, left. So the question is, do I need this? What's our hypothesis about why I don't need this? Who can make an argument for not needing this particular statement? Yeah. Yeah, I did the mod right here. Or I'd use the remainder operator. Be careful. So there is no way, after I apply the remainder operator, that index could be greater than length. So let's put some code in here. And let's see if we can get it in there. Oh, interesting. So we did need this, why? So notice that the modulus here is being applied to B, this mysterious parameter that we should have renamed by now. That only makes sure that index is smaller than length, but once I start adding I to it, it can be possible that index can grow outside. So what a smarter thing to do would be to say index plus I mod or remainder length. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have to do it this way. I have to do this. Let's say so index plus i, and then I'm going to do mod length. Now let's try this. Rotated position. Now it's mad at me. Okay. So now I don't need it, right? Now I've managed to get rid of that piece of code. So now, like I said, 
kind of happy about this. It's got a lot. I can break this, though. Now, when we gave you this problem, we promised you that the rotation would only be positive. How can I break this? What's an input value that's going to cause this to fail? Yeah, let me try something negative. Boom. Bad. So here's the problem with rotate right. If I give it negative values, it's essentially the same as rotate left, where I had to handle this case where even after applying the module, uh, even after using the remainder operator, I could have a negative index. So the solution to rotate right and rotate left starts to look very similar. In fact, the correct solution is identical you need to handle all inputs. Because if I give you a negative input to rotate right, you're doing a left rotation. If I give you a negative input to rotate left, you're doing a right rotation. Okay. Let me see if I have another one. Okay. Let me just, um, I just want to put this up here. Um, this is sort of a fun one. Um, because I want to give you guys a, a, a sense of when you're going, when you're on the wrong track. All right. So I will never, I, I will promise you this. I will never ask you to, to solve a problem in this class where you would have to write a piece of code that looks like what I'm about to show you. All right. If you find yourself writing something like that, please come talk to us. Okay. Now, I'm not, there's no way I'm going to fix all the check style errors in this caused by the indentation. I'm not even going to try. But I promise you, this works perfectly. Okay? Um, it is also awful. Um, so, so again, there's actually a lot of things that are wrong about this. I won't go into all of them. Um, oh, you missed the rest of it? Yeah. Sorry. Let me just pull this down. So again, you know, the, the point of showing you this, you know, the, the main point of showing you this, hold on, we're almost done. This solution actually checks the entire board manually inside the FL statement, which is pretty impressive. You know, um, someone put a lot of time and energy into writing this, right? But if you find your, like I said, my point of showing you this is just is simply to emphasize the following point. There's a lot of ways to get help in this class, and if you find yourself writing a piece of code that looks like this, please ask us for help, um, because it's likely that you are off on the wrong track. Okay, this is nobody's code that's in the class right now. All right, any other questions? Before we just wrap up a little bit early today, any other midterm questions? I wish you guys the best of luck. Yeah. I don't know. I hesitate to ask. A long time. I mean, it's a very, in many ways, this is a very, um, a very delicate solution. It probably took me a long time to get right. Okay. So, last announcement. Midterm exam next week. This grade cannot be dropped. You also need to take the midterm next week. If you miss it, contact the CBTF to reschedule. All right? I'll be in my office from 1 to 3 today if you want to stop by, if you have any questions or concerns. On Monday, we start the next topical unit of the class with a discussion of objects. Um, MP0 is due this weekend. Good luck finishing that up. MP1 will be released next, actually this weekend as well. So we'll give you a chance to start looking at that. We don't expect you to do much on it until after the midterm. Have a wonderful weekend. Good luck on the midterm, and I will see you on Monday. <laughs>